In today's video, we are going to talk about how you can take a charge in basketball and become a deadly effective defensive player. Let's get down and let's check this out. So this is actually a very recent clip of a charge in the NCAA March Madness. Let's get down, let's check this out, let's see how what we can learn from this clip. Really quickly, when you take a charge in basketball, you need to have both of your feet planted on the ground. Number two, your body generally has to be straight up in the air. You can usually not be allowed to be able to lean right or left, forwards or backwards when taking a charge. In the NBA as well as in the NCAA and I think if I remember correctly FIBA is also changing the rules to allow for this as well but if you take a charge inside of this half circle that you see on that court that is the spot where if you were to create or get contact on a shooter whether he created that contact or not it is a foul on you. If your heel is even on this line, you are then deemed to make the foul, not this offensive player. Now, what we do see here in this clip is that this defensive player, he is straight up in the air. However, there is a very small thing that a lot of people did notice with this play, and that is he brought his right arm down to protect himself. Is this legal? Is this not legal? That is the question that a lot of people are asking, and this is actually a legal move. You are allowed to protect yourself, However, by protecting yourself, if you bring up your knee, if you lower your shoulder, or if you turn your body away so that your shoulder is facing this offensive player, it is a foul on you. Your body does need to be straight forward towards that player. You are allowed to defend yourself, but also at the same time not allowed to defend yourself in a sense to hurt the other player. An arm between you and the other player is not intent to hurt or injure it is only intent to protect yourself some players will take a charge with both hands covering their midsection now this is a great idea for men because of course we have a lot of stuff down there that could get hurt while some girls will take a charge by having their arms in front of their chest now for girls they have to also be careful because their arms have to be in basically right on their body if their arms are away from their body a couple of inches or more basically what happens then is they could be actually called for the foul themselves because now they are trying to create contact themselves by having arms away from their body so both of these ideas having the arms across the top of their body or for guys across their midsection could be called a foul but for the sake of argument for how the rules state as long as your body is not trying to create contact with the offensive player at that point in time you are the one who should not get the foul called the offensive player should now when he did fall he did push out on that right arm now this if you were to push off normally would be called a foul on you technically it could be because then it would look like you pushed that player off of you however like it was said on b-ball breakdown by this guy who is an official referee for the NCAA and I agree with him that this arm flailing out is only incidental contact because that's just how your body moves at the same time as well this player made contact first that secondary contact would not be usually called a foul unless you maliciously tried to push that player away and at that point in time it would be classified as a double foul now let's see how timmy was able to get this charge check out his feet at the end there this is key you never want to take a charge by taking big steps into where you want to take that charge you want to take small steps because he could have started off by having the charge set up here however that player was going to do a euro step around him so what he was able to do was to take another couple of steps very small steps see that 
Could have taken the charge there, but one, two, three. Three small steps and then protected himself. This is 100% allowed, and this is exactly how you can take a charge. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a secret as to how I used to take charges. And if there's anyone who I went to high school with, or anyone who I played rep or AAU or Ontario basketball with, definitely comment below. Because they'll all back me up on this. I used to take charges and I would not fall. Now this is actually a video of me right in the middle in a quick kind of a pickup game. And as you can see, this player 10, this was just a fun pickup game. He went and tried to drive on me. I was planted and there was no foul called. The play continued. Yes, don't run into me. Because as long as your feet are planted, there is no contact from you being made onto that player, then the foul would be on that player because he made contact with you, whether or not you fall to the ground. However, if you maliciously try to injure that player, then at that point in time, it would be a foul on you. I thought you would get a kick out of that video of me way back when I was in high school. That was just a fun pickup game that we play here in Hamilton with a group of people, but that is how I used to take a charge. I hated falling. I don't like falling. And if you don't like falling and you were bigger like I was at the time, I think I was around the 240-ish range for weight. My playing weight was 220. And even at 220, I was able to have enough core strength to be able to take even the biggest players. And they would run into me. And as long as I was planted, it was a foul on them because I made zero contact with them. It was them making contact with me. I'm entitled to my ground. So that's just a quick little fun tip about taking a charge in basketball. I hope that you have enjoyed. If you have, I hope, actually, I hope you had a laugh. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.